Well, welcome to the webinar. I think this will be exciting for us all on uh, why you really need to know about the Akashic Records and what most people miss. And I'm Philip Mountrose with my wonderful partner, Jane Mountrose. Hey, a couple, Hi, of, quest <laughs> a couple of questions. Would you like your life to be uh, more of an exciting adventure, connecting with the higher realms regularly. That includes masters, ascended masters, angels, and more. Boosting your spiritual intelligence. All of that is part of what we're going to be talking about today. And most holistic-minded people uh, want to connect more with their soul's purpose and mission and apply that to their everyday life. Uh, and then you become more of a beacon of light for yourself and others and, and the world. And you're not only dreaming of a better reality, but you're, you're living a better reality. So uh, Jane and myself, uh, we've been uh, in the holistic spiritual field for about three decades now. And it's gone by pretty quickly. We published a lot of books on spiritual growth and uh, uh, healing. And we teach and train and help people individually. And one of our really primary focuses would be connecting with your soul, your higher self, and, and actually teaching people how to live by that more deeply and consistently. And one of the best things we found for doing that is... Uh, connecting with the Akashic records. This has really sort of skyrocketed our spiritual growth and able to teach and help people. And just a quick one sentence definition of the Akashic records. It's a multi-dimensional, higher dimensional place and energetic database that holds all your past, present and potential futures. I know that's kind of hard to get your mind around and we're gonna be exploring that today to give you a lot more clarity but once you start to, to uh, understand it and use it, uh, your life can change in beautiful transformational ways. So today, what we're going to be focusing on is uh, the spiritual and scientific perspectives on the Akashic Records, five common myths, misunderstandings about the Akashic Records, how to raise your vibration, uh, and stick around for, to the whole thing because we'll sh share how you can go further with all of this as well. Uh, so why don't we begin, Jane? Uh, you want to tell a little bit more about ourselves? <laughs> okay. Well, it's uh, mostly the story that that I have that brought us where we are with the Akashic Records and some other things. Uh, now we, like Philip said, we've been doing spiritual work for actually more than <laughs> well over three decades. And uh, our focus has been in most of the, that time on um, holistic and spiritual coaching and uh, spiritual healing. Those have been uh, real major focuses for us. And of course, many things have occurred over the years. Uh, some I'm going to be talking about more. Actually, next week, we're going to have a part two of all of this and more of an overview of where we're going uh, with the course that's coming up. Uh, what I wanted to share now is the part of my story that relates to the Akashic Records specifically and how that happened. Uh, the thing that happened, and this was just a few years ago, I had an angelic Reiki session with uh, a wonderful friend of mine. And somehow in that angelic Reiki session, um, a traumatic laugh, last, last life, past life, the past life memory that I had of the fall of Atlantis uh, was healed. And this was a big deal because, uh, as you might imagine, the fall of Atlantis was very traumatic for many people. <laughs> and some of some of the people here may even have some of that trauma um, unconsciously <laughs> hidden in your background, too. Um, it, I found out about it in 2006, and it was it was something that was really terrifying. And with all of the tools that we had, 
I hadn't been able to clear it. I could clear just about anything. Um, other past lives, uh, many kinds of um, traumas and problems and issues. Uh, obviously, <laughs> doing the work that we do, we've gone through many things and worked successfully with many, many people also. So this, it really made an impression on me that that happened. It happened spontaneously. It wasn't even my focus of that session. But it got my attention. And at the very end of the session, just in my own, in my own awareness, um, Archangel Metatron came to me. And I had been aware of Archangel Metatron, but never really connected much with him. And he said that he wanted to talk to me. So I I took that and I thought about it afterwards. And, and the next day, I went into a meditation and, and connected with Archangel Metatron. And what he told me was that it was time for me to access my full range of resources. And really, for, for Philip and me, we worked together to access our full range of resources. And over the next months, we came to understand that what he was doing was inviting us to open to a more expansive view of reality, reality as it's experienced in, you could say, in the higher dimensions with uh, archangels, enlightened masters, uh, goddesses, uh, connections with nature spirits, and, and the whole range of things that are invisible to us here in the third dimension with our with our <laughs> external vision um, that actually are available to us uh, if we open to it. And then, of course, along with that, access to the Akashic Records. Uh, Archangel Metatron is seen in the angelic realms as being the overseer of the Akashic Records. And he is an archangel who is considered to be one of them that's closest to source. He's an amazing enlightened master. We'll just connect with him here in a, a few minutes because uh, these archangels are, their greatness is just to me <laughs> breathtaking. Uh, their love is profound. Um, the potential that they offer us is really exciting. And as Philip mentioned as we started connecting with all of these different things that were available to us life became more of an exciting adventure than it ever had been before and i think having been interested always in as long as i can remember in accelerating spiritual growth uh, for myself and for those who are interested um it was a real uh, this whole period since then since that that event uh, with the uh, angelic Reiki session has been re incredible and continues to be. I think even today we were talking about some new things that we're developing that we're going to bring into the Akashic Records course uh, that's coming up that are really exciting. Uh, so the adventure continues. And the interesting thing about the Akashic Records is uh, Philip was, when he was talking about past, present, future, he was kind of hedging. And the reason is because the it's not like it's a fixed library, like your past, present, and future are all fixed. It's what is commonly called a living library. Because as we change, our past, present, and future all change too. So we can actually change our history. We can change the trajectory that we're on so that we can live more fully, so that we can enjoy life more, so we can experience more magic, more miracles, uh, so many different things. And connecting with the records has really been, a, <laughs> um, it's hard to even say how amazing the adventure has been. As I suggested, I'm actually going to be uh, sharing kind of the trajectory of what I learned about it um, next week. <laughs> um, but for now, I, I wanted to just share how transformational it has been and uh, how beautiful the experience has been for us and for those who, ha who have joined us um, in recent years in the courses that we have started to teach and in personal sessions um, and just friends connecting. It is, it is really um 
something that exceeds to me exceeds any potential expectations because I think it really is hard for us to fathom everything that is there. <laughs> we, if we haven't seen it, then we don't, we don't even know it exists. But that's the exciting part. And um, as I suggested, I just want to take a moment. We often start <laughs> after this is a few minutes in, but we often start um, our classes, our sessions together, connecting, just taking a moment and connecting. <laughs> you could say, um, if you're in a place where it's safe, you might want to close your eyes for a moment. And we're going to just focus on breathing. As I suggested, I want to invite Archangel Metatron to join us. And if you're not familiar with the experience of angels around you, just, just open to allowing yourself to experience that light. You might sense it, just feel, feel a beautiful vibration of love. You might perceive it with your internal vision. He's often experienced uh, in terms of colors and energy as, as having a, a beautiful sparkling white golden light, golden white sparkling, beautiful, vibrant, loving light. So you can just ask him to surround you with that light and take it in. You know, allow it to come into the cells in your body. And just feel feel the love from Archangel Metatron and all of the beings. There are always beings of light around us. So just opening to that and breathing. Releasing with the exhale. Just a few nice breaths can bring you much more into your body and into the moment. And just feeling that presence and opening to the opportunities that are here for you. We'll be going into a little deeper visualization later in the webinar. Um, this is just a, it's an opening and an invitation to Archangel Metatron to oversee our time together here today and for us to sense what that's like for us. I get into those places like, I just want to be here with this. <laughs> kind of blissful. It feels so good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jane. Uh, so we want to help you get a foundation of where the Akashic records are from different perspectives. And specifically, uh, we wanted to talk about uh, the spiritual perspectives on the Akashic records and the science perspectives, sort of both realms there. And there's quite a history there. So because if you're new to the Akashic records, you might wonder like, wow, in cosmic universal library, you know, what do people say about this? And actually, they say quite a bit. Uh, in the spiritual wisdom traditions and luminaries, uh, you can look at Hinduism. They talked about the Akash. That was uh, uh, that was the basic element, the ethers, where all the other elements rose up from the basic field of the fire and the earth and the air and the water. And then there's Buddhism that talks about Buddha universal nature where every all the knowledge is stored. And then you can look also at uh, native uh, traditions, native ancestral t traditions. And in that case, uh, there's the ancestral lineage and shamanism comes in there too. And that's very multidimensional and instantaneous. And if you want to look at some spiritual luminaries and way showers, you can just go to Edgar Casey. You may know the sleeping prophet who I think he gave thousands of very accurate readings in trance from the Akashic records, including medical diagnoses and much more. Rudolf Steiner in the 1900s also was a clairvoyant visionary, really a Renaissance man. He talked about the Akashic Chronicles where the spiritual connects with the physical. Uh, Yogananda, uh, the autobiography of a yoga who brought yoga to the West, 
Uh, he talked about a universal consciousness, and even Deepak Chopra recently as well talks about the Akashic field and the Akashic records. And now going just briefly into a science perspective, because some people might say, you know, where is science in all of this? Is this, well, not obviously it's beyond much conventional science, but there, especially in quantum physics, uh, it's becoming more and more recognized that everything is connected. And uh, the universe has a, an order to it. It's structured. It's not random. It's comprehensible. And it's filled with, it's not empty. Space is not empty. Rather, it's filled with energy and information. Information, And it preserves this memory in a universal uh, field. And something I'll just point out, which I think is very fascinating, is that uh, in near-death experiences where people clinically die, you may have heard of those, and there's many of them recorded. Uh, many, many of the people have them. So you, quote, physically die, your brain stops functioning. <clears throat> and yet a consciousness still emerges outside the physical. And during this time, it's very, very common for people to have life reviews where they see in a flash their whole life very clearly before them in just a couple seconds, including the impacts of how you influenced other people. So how can you do this? How can all of this be remembered? And this again is, it relates to the Akashic records. So there's some perspectives that give you kind of a background and we wanted to go into the myths, the five myths, because since it's pretty metaphysical, but yet very practical, uh, there's, a, there's a certain amount of misunderstandings about the records that we want to clear up. Jane? Yeah. Um, well, myth number one, you could say, is that you need to have special abilities to access the records. And that actually isn't true. Anyone can access the Akashic records if, <laughs> if they're willing or you're willing <clears throat> or we're willing to follow a few guidelines because it doesn't require any special knowledge or anything. What it requires is um, a certain type, uh, you might say, of purity. So the requirements for entry, you could say, include having an open heart, for one thing. And this has always, for so many years, ever since we started teaching, has been our focus on connecting with the truth in your heart, with your heart also being your own source of guidance and wisdom. It is the place where um, you could say the creator is connected with you. So if, if for those of us who tend to believe that all of us are aspects of the creator, it is true because the creator resides in our hearts. Uh, so that's the first one, opening your heart, opening to love as we did with Archangel Metatron. And then having... As I mentioned, I mentioned purity, having a pure intent to understand the truth, to receive the truth and the highest good of all concerned um, without agendas. Uh, agendas are those kind of biases and you could say desired results <laughs> where you want, you want to connect with maybe, and we use oracles a lot, you might want to use oracles to validate what what your mind uh, now believes. Um, so what we want to do is is have that pure intent and openness. Um, and then willing also, this is, this is this is one that is real has been very challenging for me and I think for anyone who really gets into the records deeply, um, a willingness to trust what you learn there. And this is not to say believe things, you know, just because, <laughs> just because um, it's, it's fine to be reflective about it. And it's fine ultimately to, to feel that maybe something doesn't make sense to you. My perception from my experiences with it is that it, it pretty much holds true. And I, as I'll be sharing uh, next time, I've I've kind of had to laugh because I would receive some information in the Akashic records and and I would say, well, how can I know that this is true? And a lot of times the 
the guides, <laughs> my guides in the records would say to me, look on the internet, go to Google. <laughs> so I would go to Google and synchronously something would show up that would validate it for me. Um, in a way, Google. yeah, what we're doing is bringing more synchronicity and more fluidity into our lives. And it can be, it can be very challenging and it, it can also just be, uh, well, <laughs> funny at some at some times. It's kind of like it's so I I could look up things and it's so ironic. I can't believe that I'm reading what I'm reading. That's a validation. Um, anyhow, it it's it's just a magical thing if we can open with a pure heart, essentially, and be open to what we might receive, because it our beliefs are at a certain level, and the Akashic records. Philip was talking about that idea of of having your whole life reviewed. Well, what about your whole history? All the way back, for me, I I was able to track my history all the way back to Atlantis and beyond. You know, we come from the stars. There is so much more to us than we really understand. We might understand on some, on some level, well, gee, I'm not just this. And I know that uh, some of us tend to be more angelic and some of us tend to be more earthy. And um, there are all these things that point to a very long history of our souls that steps all the way up to the magnificence that has come down that is us in the higher dimension. So we'll, we'll be talking about that. Um, anyhow, with all of that, um, I think another part of about the uh, Akashic records is that some teachers say that they have the way to connect. And ev some even actually require students to acknowledge their teacher <laughs> as part of their entry into the records. And it's not like that. Um, the records, and we'll be talking about it more, um, the records are not a place. The records are an energy there. You could say in a way it's, it's a, a state. The records are here now. <laughs> it's not like we're actually going somewhere. I remember also someone talking about the Akashic records and they said, well, they're all stored in the Pleiades. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that's not my understanding at least. Um, so, so it's very interesting. Um, Anyhow, as I mentioned, I think trust and belief are so important. Um, not that you have to be naive about what might happen, but I think it's what what tends to happen is it shows you how the soul exists in higher dimensions, that we're so much more than we believe we are, understand ourselves to be now. And another part of it, is that's really important is to be open to the guides who are here to support you like Archangel Metatron. And as part of our trainings, we, we teach about connecting with the masters and the angels and different beings who are here to support us and to, to bring us love, to help us to heal. They send activating energies. Uh, so many things can happen. Um, another, another part that I think is equally important, it has been for me, is having a spiritual family around you. And this is, as we all have physical families, the ones we were born with, who may or may not be supportive, may or may not even be around us, um, there is a spiritual family for us. And I think one of the things we feel actually about Awakenings Institute is that Awakenings, part of Awakenings Institute's goal is to provide a spiritual family for the people who are connecting with the things that we're doing. And I know some, some of the people here are people, uh, today are people I know and are part, I consider them part of my spiritual family mm -hmm. or you, and I think you know who you are. Um, and you are for each other. So this is another part, I think, about any kind of a training that you receive. It's important to have that spiritual family around you because you will be challenged. You will need other people to support you. And you will also, I think, welcome the opportunity to support them. So 
that's that's something I think that makes it a wonderful adventure. Um, as I mentioned, it it has been much more than I ever would have thought. Uh, we discover weaknesses or experience how weaknesses have played out in our past and also understand that these weaknesses are not a sign that there's something wrong with us. They're a sign that we have illusions of limitation that we can transcend to really connect with the greatness that resides within us. So um, it also is, I mentioned just very briefly now, uh, Oracle cards in when we started connecting with the angels and the masters and all of these different things that Archangel Metatron was kind of leading us to, uh, we realized that we needed some tools and Oracle cards, including tarot cards, have been a huge plus <laughs> in for connecting with angels, for connecting with masters, for connecting with nature, and for connecting with the records. So uh, in the Akashic Records course, as we're going to be teaching it, we also use Oracle cards. And if there's time, I think a little later today, I'm going to give an example of a, an Oracle reading I did that then took me into the records where I was able to explore something. I, the oracles, um, they create a clarity and a sense of understanding of things that happen in the records that allows, allows you to get more from the experience altogether. And they may direct you to resources. They may direct you to angels or masters or I, I keep getting the message, <laughs> spend more time in nature. And I think that all of these things are really important for us. Um, they make also, it makes every day an, an adventure more than I think Philip would agree. And probably many of the people here who have um, been working with these tools also, that it is the most amazing adventure ever. Wouldn't you say, Philip? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, the combination of the oracles with the Akashic records, it's just an incredible uh, exponential combination. And, and I think certain challenges people have is what do you do in the records? Connecting with the records is not that big a deal. It's what you do once you get there. Uh, like when we teach energy healing, say doing EFT, energy healing is pretty simple to learn, but how to become just, good, good with it and explore it and use it. Is, so 42% um, is WordPress, 31.7% is custom. <laughs> I have a slight interruption there. Well, let's go to the second of the five myths that we're going to cover today. And that's myth number two about the Akashic Records. There is only one way to enter the Akashic Records. Uh, and if you've looked at people's trainings or people who teach the Akashic Records, they have their way of teaching it, which is fine and it may be very good, but it may give you the impression that their way is the only way. And that's a lot of things that our society sort of gets in the guruship, which we try to avoid where I'm the leader, I know the only way. And it's very actually disempowering, although people may follow it uh, and it may work, uh, but Ultimately, you want to be more, more able to choose and have a certain flexibility and do things that are right for you. So some people, teachers teach there is a certain prayer you need to use or an invocation or a meditation. Um, so one particular way and any and all of those ways can work and you may even want to get a sampling. What we like to do is teach several different ways and have people choose the way that fits them the best. And Part of the One idea. thing I want to say, can I just, it's not everybody. There are many teachers who yeah. are sincere and want the best for, for everyone. There are also those who want to have people believe that they have. <laughs> but, and spiritual teachers are subject to this just as much as anyone else, that this is the way. <laughs> I discovered the way. Um, whereas actually all of us are so, so unique we have to discover our own way and we may have 
guidance, but uh, it's different for everyone. The experience mm -hmm. of awakening is, is unique to each person. And as we've suggested, the, the, since the Akashic records are in a higher dimensional realm, the way you get there and you've been there is, is in an altered state, a meditative state. Right. And if you just, even right now, just kind of, if you can, if you can close your eyes and breathe and relax for a moment. And as you breathe and relax, you let your brain just relax and your heart open. And you breathe in some nice, clear breaths. And you exhale slowly and you just feel more and more relaxed. And as you're more and more opened in a receptive state, this is a place where it's easy to enter a higher realm, uh, which when you focus it, you can direct it to the records and, and you can open your eyes now and feel grounded. But what, what research shows is even closing your eyes changes your brain waves. It slows them down. You're more receptive. Uh, and um, that's part of being in the records. So let's go on to the myth number three, uh, Jane. And that is that the Akashic records exist in a literal library that's filled with books. And as Philip and we've been suggesting already, uh, the Akashic records aren't actually a place. They are a vibration, uh, you could say a state. <laughs> They're energy and information. Um, and many or maybe even most of us probably have accessed information from our records without even knowing it. If you think about it, uh, information that has been gained during this lifetime um, can exist in your brain. Information that is drawn from anything before that has to come from somewhere else, right? The brain doesn't have, doesn't hold that information. It's not, it doesn't exist in the brain. Um, it exists in what people would call the Akashic records or the Akash. Um, you could also say, describe it as higher mind. And it's interesting, Philip was talking about different ways to access the records. One is considered uh, to be hypnosis, uh, different uh, visualization processes. And we've been practicing and, and studying and teaching uh, hypnosis for many years, hypnotherapy. In fact, one of my most poignant <laughs> experiences of a past life happened many, many years ago, uh, more than 30 years ago, actually, uh, when I was doing a, a process that would have, it was a spiritual process. It was supposed to be <laughs> going into the spiritual process um, to find out. And I would, what I wanted to know at the time was why I was so reluctant to express myself because I was, I had tremendous fear of expressing myself, which may be familiar to others also. Um, and in that process, Philip was there and we were working with two spiritual teachers at the time. They were both in the room and Philip was in the room. So I closed my eyes and immediately I was being burned at the stake. And I knew it, the, the flames were coming up my legs and, and, and eventually engulfed my entire body, um, which was a very terrifying experience. Um, and then I experienced, I had the experience of dying and going off <laughs> into the higher realms and feeling at peace, um, which in that particular case, it happened to sort of circle back. So then I experienced being burned at the stake again. It happened a few times and each time with less intensity until the intensity was gone, which completely surprised me. Uh, none of that could come from the brain <laughs> because the brain doesn't have that kind of information. Um, it, you could say that that came from the records. I didn't know that that was what it is, but it was. Um, so when we started going into the records, I had some kind of a sense of it. And it's possible many or most of you may have experiences like that also that you've had that are that are from beyond this life or something that's in the higher dimensions that that this physical brain couldn't possibly hold. Well, where does it come from? Uh, we might happen upon our records. We can also do it intentionally, which is what we're talking about here. Um, 
And some people do see the records as a library with records or scrolls and and they they receive a book. Often there are record keepers. I have record keepers um, who work with me, um, spiritual beings who are coordinating your records and the record keepers hand the person a book and <laughs> and you get to to read it. I never I never had books. Um and some people don't even ever see a library. I I work with many many different people and we have a a process a visualization process that it's fairly brief and easy to do that that uh people connect use to connect with the records. Um, I know one of the ones uh, that stands out was a woman who she went to her records and it was a big crystal, a uh, crystal in structure. And she was handed crystals when she asked for information and she would take the crystals and, and open to what was there for her. It may not even be something you see. I think, Philip, isn't yours, you, you describe it more as, an energy than a place mm -hmm. sometimes yeah it's an and it feel it's more of a feeling a connection that i know i'm connected just an inner knowingness right and it's different for different people as james right is describing yeah here. yeah and for me actually when i started i did experience going to a library the first experience that i had it was a library and uh i was sitting at a table and there were shelves with books all around and then they went up, they went up high, but there was no ceiling. And this is common because the records exist in different dimensions. So some people think that you enter the records in the fifth dimension or the seventh dimension. Um, I think you enter in different dimensions. The way that it was explained to me um, is that I entered in the sixth dimension. That's the kind of the starting place and then you can actually then raise up to the eighth dimension and even the tenth dimension. So I started in the sixth dimension in this library and then uh, at some point, probably a month later or something, I went and I was in a higher dimension and the books were further away and smaller, like the, the shelves of books were less important and I could see more of the universe around me which was very interesting to me. And I was there for a while and then um, being led by angels like Archangel Metatron and guides, um, I was guided that it was time for me to, to step up. And there were, the, as I mentioned, three steps up into the 10th dimension. And that actually took a little bit of practice because what happens is we have to refine our vibration to, to go higher. And some people may just be there. Um, <laughs> some people are not like me. Um, so it took me a little while, but I, I was able finally to get there. And then it was like the the rows of books, they were, they were there, but they were like a mile away. And it was mostly the universe around, which is what I experience now. And the books are completely gone. Um, so it it is a, it's like I said, <laughs> It's an adventure that's magical and mystical in ways that you probably couldn't even uh, imagine what might happen there. And and of course, like I said, I never I never had books. Um, I always receive well, not, actually not always, but most of the times, uh, the record keepers hand me orbs of of energy, and I I grasp that energy and and receive from that. Um, I don't know, how do you receive, Philip? Uh, it just seems to come, once I have this feeling, and once I have this feeling, then I start to, to speak, or I, I often record or transcribe it, uh, uh, voice the text. Uh, it just, I feel like I'm tapped in, and if I open my mouth or start typing, mm -hmm. I know it'll come out. It's right. kind of a strange trusting, and, and sometimes I wonder what in the world, I mean, I have no idea, you know, or something. I have a strange oracle that I don't understand or seems even <laughs> counterintuitive. And I just say, well, let me see what it means. And it all makes sense. And I say, right. 
it always makes sense. And I use the word always intentionally because having done this now for years or pretty regular, years, right. yeah. uh, daily, it just uh, comes out comprehensively and sometimes very surprising. And if you get the guidance and the right training and, um, and do it the way that's right for you, I think you'll have similar results. That's what mm -hmm. people find. Right. Right. Good results. Yeah. And just to, to go back to that idea uh, that it contains your whole history, past, present, and future, when you go into the records, it, it's not like all of a sudden, <laughs> here it is. <laughs> um, I think it is, you could say it is handed to us in pieces as we're, as we're ready for things and in, in relation to what we ask for. Right. So you go with an intention, and as we mentioned, uh, this is one of the reasons we use the oracles, because it helps us to really hone our intention for going there and understanding much more what we're aiming for, um, and then you receive from there. Right. And like I said, there's no, no reason why you can't ask for how you would validate <laughs> something that you receive in the records either. I, I think that's completely valid. And I've always done that myself and generally, but not always end up at Google. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll help. So we're going on to myth number four out of five that the Akashic Records tells your future, the idea of divination. <laughs> uh, just to clarify what we're talking about here. Um, as we've mentioned, the library is a living library, the Akashic library, even though we talked about what that means, the library. Uh, it's a living medium storage system. And just to explain what that means is uh, the future is not set in stone, as you probably realize. It's not certain. Uh, so you can't know for certain what is going to happen because we all have free will and there can be very disruptive, big events, natural disasters and wars and the like. But we do have these timelines, these trajectories we're on. So to just use an obvious example is say I'm uh, eating poorly, I'm not sleeping well, I'm not exercising. I think in my future, I'm going to be pretty unhealthy. That's a pretty good prediction <laughs> based on my choices. Now I have the choices to change my diet, my sleeping, um, my exercising, and I will have a different future. So there's different potentials. And that one's kind of obvious, but uh, that makes sense. Some things are more obscure and, and complex than that. So we have these past patterns, and Jane was describing some examples for her, and they really influence our future. And when we have this universal uh, information memory field, i.e. the Akashic Record, sometimes called the Book of Life, and uh, I did a uh, reading with uh, Susan, who's actually here on the uh, webinar, and she wanted help with being, have, being more creatively expressive. And as, as we mentioned, we like to use Oracle cards because it supercharges your results and gives you guidance and direction. And the card we drew from one of the special decks, uh, if you can see it, is uh, it says the freedom. There's some bird flying free. And for Susan, that was opening doors in itself, just the idea of being, as she said, free as a bird. And going into the Akashic Records then, with that in mind, uh, she saw a past life where she, she was harmed by her husband for speaking out. And that may <laughs> make sense even now to a lot of people of like disobeying the powers that be, which may even be uh, the person you're married to in relationship to or authorities. And she was punished severely for that. So the interesting thing about uh, a story like that, and then when Susan did that, she, she became freer because she had a clarity a clarity and like Jane did with the burning at the stake. It's not that there's not threats and dangers we all face, but we carry it over. And if we keep seeing that our nervous system is on hyper alert, hyper focused, and we're, we're squashing our freedom. And so now Susan realizes she has more possibilities. Doors opened up, as she said, doors and some doors closed and she's writing on a blog and being more expressive. Uh, about herself. So the idea is, yes, you can direct the future. And the more you have awareness, and sometimes these past life things like why, you know, 
why did I uh, used to have um, uh, uh, seasickness? Why did I have that? I have no idea. You know, I had no incident in this life. Going into a past life, I was seeing a sailor going down with the ship, drowning. So once I saw that past life, that cleared my seasickness, and I was fine after that. I never had that problem. So sometimes you just need to find ways to go deeper into your experience. Uh, so, Jane, uh, should we go on to the final myth, though, the fifth <laughs> myth? Sure. Uh, the fifth myth is that the records are all you need <laughs> to evolve. And we wouldn't say, obviously, from, from what we've described so far, we wouldn't say that that is completely true they you can so much can happen in the records but there are other things that are equally important um well like just having the experience of connecting with archangel metatron um if we if we start to connect regularly with those kinds of beings uh specifically archangels for some reasons and then enlightened masters who are teachers for other reasons um it changes us. I think anyone who has connected with angels, like archangels, and we, we talk about archangels specifically because they're a high, high vibration angels. Um, it changes you. You know, that it's kind of like that, that divine love does rub off <laughs> in some way. Like we, we become, we become more, I guess I, I, for some reason, I, I guess softer, softer and more loving and more accepting. And it, it's a beautiful thing um, that doesn't necessitate having the records. Um, we actually, along with the program that we're teaching, we wrote a, a book, Awakening to Your Magnificence, which is about what we consider to be the next new frontier for humanity. And that would be awakening to the vastness of what's all around us that we're unaware of. The angels, the masters, our, our records. Um, that living library that is evolving and changing as we change and grow every minute. Um, so the, there is a very mysterious kind of a, I don't know, I guess undertone is, it's like an overtone, you could say. Uh, to all of the things that we know here. And if we only see things with our physical eyes, we're missing so much of what is here in our reality. Um, so, as we mentioned also, results in the records, and I think in general, are related to the clarity of your awareness and your intentions for what it is that you're wanting to perceive or wanting how you're wanting to grow, whatever it is that you're wishing to experience. Um, and I wanted to share actually a, an experience that is very, actually it's been present to me. Um, over the last weekend, I came down with a sinus infection. And so um, what I decided to do was to, to do an oracle reading on the sinus infection to find out what it is that was causing it and then go into the records to find out if there was anything I needed to receive there and to also from the records receive a prescription for healing, which is kind of an interesting idea that we can go into the records because in the records, the best, you could say the best, <laughs> the most, uh, uh, fruitful trajectory that's available to us is known. We can access in the records. So I just wanted to share a little bit about it because I think it was such a great example of using the Oracle cards and going into the records. And then actually <laughs> on top of that, then I'll, I'll tell you what I did in the end. Um, so first of all, I, I wanted to get a card from you have to excuse <laughs> the crazy ones. Um, a card for the ultimate goal of the healing. Uh, and I went to a, an oracle that would give me like a doorway. And the doorway that was presented to me, like the ultimate goal was oneness. 
And spiritually, that makes a lot of sense because it is when we're in those places, we're in a place of division. There's something that is not connecting. Um, and that became the central focus of the process. Uh, I had I actually ended up with uh, six different cards for a reason um, to find out the nature of the issue. And using these are uh, tarot cards, <laughs> the nature of the issue that I that was defined with this particular deck was uh, nature arcana number fifteen, the devil. Uh, for those who know the tarot, that's that's like a it can be addictions and, <laughs> and different things. Uh, what it that what it was in that case was being over overly focused on what was happening in the earthly realm, and I think all of us are prone to it. We may be very spiritual, but there's a lot of stuff happening <laughs> in the earthly realm, and we can get kind of uh, I think just stuck losing sight of the bigger picture at times. So that was what I was told was that, and then to change my perspective. I needed to connect with major arcana number 20, 21, which is the last of the major arcana cards in the tarot, the world, which is like the big picture. <laughs> Again, that picture of oneness. Um, and there were other some other cards. I can't go into all the details with the time we have. Um, so from there, I asked what soul strength I could embrace. And that was another card. I got the two of air and realized that what it was telling me was that I needed to take a break and draw from the vibration of the next card, which was which was major arcana number seven, the chariot to experience victory. And it was a kind of a process. There were defined actually uh, meanings for each of the cards that I drew and also for the full picture um, there were six cards, which are the number of cards on Metatron's, or the number of points on Metatron's cube, for those who understand sacred geometry. And the purpose of that, then I'll explain in a little bit here. Um, so with that, I had a clear sense of the issue, and I wanted to go into the records and find out, okay, so is there something in my past that would cause me to to be in this place where I get overly consumed by uh, what's happening in the physical realms and then uh, forgetting to look at the bigger picture. So I went to the place where my records are. I actually now call it my heavenly home <laughs> because it's like this expansive place where many things happen. And so I, I asked for prescriptions of steps to take to heal. And I saw a new view from some past lives. And this was an interesting thing because well, the life, the one at being burned at the stake really created a big impression on me in this life of betrayal. And I have over, over the past had a lot of betrayal, um, which has left me thinking in a way, believing to a certain degree that I'm a victim of being betrayed. And when I went into the records, what I saw was there are lives that I had where I was very strong and I could draw on that energy. And the one that came to me, which I thought was really beautiful, was um, a time when I was a priestess in on the fabled, fabled or real at that point, um, Isle of Avalon, which has always been a fascination for me, Avalon. Um, from my records, I'm just reading a little bit of my notes here. I saw others from that wondrous life and they were all dancing around me and encouraging me to lighten up and to bring back that sense of kind of oneness and connectedness that I had then. And I could see that even that dancing was probably from something that was experienced at that time. So it was really beautiful. Um, and I told that I was told that the prescription for healing was to embrace those strengths that I had lost, that I was aware actually of that life and there were others also, um, but I hadn't realized that I had given up some of the strength that I had in the past. And we all have that mm -hmm. as souls. You know, part of the reason we're here and believe that we're limited to whatever degree we believe we're limited is because we haven't 
integrated into our awareness now, the strengths that we really hold, that our souls have. Our souls are magnificent. We just forget. <laughs> so so that was a really wonderful thing. Um, and when, when that happened, then I felt this energy, this energy all around me really vibrating that strength. Um, and I could feel it returning to my body all the way down into my DNA. And afterwards, and I talked to Philip right afterwards, I felt much better. I was probably like 75% healed at that point from the sinus infection. Um, and then what I did, which we're also going to teach in this, we're going to teach this whole thing in the course coming up, is I, I have a kind of a, it's like a little cloth that has Metatron's cube on it. And I mentioned that it has the six circles around. So I put the six cards on it. And I asked Metatron and his his angels who are support, supporting him to help to integrate that energy. It's kind of like that idea of a crystal grid, but using oracle cards. Um, so I put that out and that was just a few days ago. And every day I've felt much, much better. And I'm really actually pretty much healed now, just in a few days. Um, and again, amazed by the experience and enlightened by the experience. Because I, I did, I forgot something. There are, for all of us, things that we've forgotten, how strong we are, how magnificent we are. And this, again, is, as I mentioned, that to yeah. us is really about the next new frontier for humanity. You know, some people think it's about perfecting the body or perfecting the brain or something, <laughs> you know, having the right, the right supplements or the right drugs or something that is going to make us Superman when actually it is the wondrous beyond. I, that's the way I see it anyhow. And uh, I'm always grateful, mm -hmm. so grateful mm -hmm. for the blessings. Yeah. And, uh, what Jane did was a rather advanced process, but we start off with the basic processes, some very simple, right. easy to do processes. Yeah, and you learn it in pieces. Record. This particular one, you learn it in pieces. So it you and then you put the pieces together and voila. <laughs> voila. <laughs> and uh in in we're getting close to closing here. I just wanted to share an important idea for you because some of this may seem far uh, out. Philip, Philip yes? we didn't get to do the visualization that I promised. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> and this, we wanted to share a visualization that is uh, related to the one that we use for going into the records. And the reason for doing this particular part of it is to raise your, to raise your frequency. So, um, if you're wanting to <laughs> to experience it, you can start by closing your eyes if you're in a safe place, of course, for that. And we'll start like we did before with breathing. Releasing with the exhale and inviting Archangel Metatron again to bless us with love, beautiful, beautiful spiritual light. And just feeling that all through you, if you want, in all the cells of your body. All the cells love, love. And some of them don't receive as much as they could. So there may be some places in your body that you don't love as much as you could. You can send that energy there. Send it into your mind, your brain. Which can also just relax some of those thoughts that wander around there. And asking that any energy that's not your own, asking it to go back where it came from. This, I think, is so powerful to do every day, <laughs> anytime. Uh, we all pick up energy, just like a tabletop picks up dust. It's from other people, other places, other times. And we can just send send it back as much as possible for where it came from. And that what that does is it creates more space for your own light. So just bringing in more of that light and love. 
And similarly, we leave bits of ourselves in other times and places with other people, other people holding on to parts of us. So you can ask for as much of that as possible to come back to you now in this moment, just bringing more of yourself here. And noticing how that feels, if you feel more present in the moment in your body than you did when we started which is, of course, the purpose. And from there, breathing in lighter energy and Metatron and all of the beings of light around us can support us in breathing in lighter energy. So you feel lighter and feel like you could begin to drift upward, just floating beautifully, safely, wonderfully upward. So we're going up into the sky and just metaphorically, at least, imagining that we're poking through the atmosphere. In other words, poking through <laughs> the place where we can go beyond the mass consciousness thought forms that are holding us um, or trying to hold us in limitation here. So we're out beyond that now, out, out in the universe, just drifting up into a place of complete and total freedom. with the stars twinkling around us. And just noticing how that feels, how freedom feels, how that, you could say from my healing, how that oneness, that state of oneness and connectedness feels. Just being able to let all of that heaviness drift down through your body and out. So you can be light and free. And here, I, I also, just for a very short, brief moment, want to introduce another angel, Archangel Orion, who is, a, you could say, a cosmic angel, another very light, just again, uh, feeling, sensing his energy, which may feel different to you than Metatron. And Orion is experienced as being like starlight, so you might experience yourself being surrounded by starlight and even feeling that in your body. A beautiful higher frequency of light. And just notice who you are when you're up in these stars, in the universe, and you're free. Free to be yourself, free to open to your magnificence. So knowing that you can return to this place anytime and, and spend a little time in that place because what that is doing is raising your vibration, which is going to support you in the records and reaching a higher, attaining a higher vibration. And of course, there's higher, higher um qualities of, of energy and information that you receive as you move into those higher dimensions. So we can thank all of those beautiful beings who are surrounding us and supporting us. Another Archangel Michael can always invite Archangel Michael to support you. He's a protector, a strengthener, keeping you safe, keeping us all safe. So thanking them all. For now, we're just going to return back where we started, just drifting down beautifully till you find yourself back in your seat and putting your feet on the ground, sensing that connection with the earth. We want to be grounded. We want to be in that perfect balance between heaven and earth. And I'm breathing in more active energy now, returning to your normal waking state. And then when you're ready, opening your eyes. So up there in the stars. <laughs> we're coming back down now. <laughs> That's where you find Landing, the records. Grounding, yeah. Those yeah. higher vibration yeah. Yeah, exactly. fields Thank of energy. You. That was great. And we go more 
specifically into that, obviously. Yeah, we explore that and you get the exact uh, support and training that, mm -hmm. that you, uh, you want. Uh, I, I want to just share one other point briefly that's rather important because uh, it, it, it could, throw, could throw you off. And, and that's what I, we're calling the status quo in higher realities and awareness. So the status quo, I sometimes call it the CN rea CNN reality. There's a lot of good things in that, and we use that, and it helps us. However, it can also be very limiting if that's all we're looking to. Because uh, as Jane was mentioning, there's thought forms created in the mass consciousness thought forms, which are in the mainstream status quo, if we let it, they will dictate our reality. And I know all of us who are holistic minded want to grow and transcend the limitations of 3D conventional reality while using the good points, of course. Uh, so what that means is drawing on your inner senses, not just your external senses, because CNN, ordinary reality is all external senses, verified, measurable, physical, often kind of very random that there are no larger realities out there, no greater consciousness. And uh, I think what we're talking about, and you may know this famous quote from I no less than Einstein, <laughs> is that imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. And if we use that kind of way of going about our intuition is going to be boosted because if you want to grow spiritually you need to boost your intuition that's critical mm -hmm. mission critical so how do you do that <laughs> how do you do that oddly enough there's not that many trainings directly on your intuition even though especially spiritually minded people have a certain amount of intuition how do you develop it how do you use it how do you combine it with spiritual discernment and we've just found the Akashic records, especially combined with the oracles, especially mm -hmm. chosen oracles that we use in our teachings, uh, magnifies your intuition. So it's kind of like physically, how do you get stronger muscles? Well, you go out and work out and do weightlifting. <laughs> so that will use your muscles and develop your muscles. And similarly, this will use your intuition and develop it. Um, Jane, anything else you wanted to mention on just kind of having an open mindset to go to these higher realities and grow spiritually? I think, again, what you were saying about the Oracle cards, they're wonderful tools for opening to your intuition because reading the cards and, and receiving what the messages are in each card for you, it may not be even exactly anything that's said about the card. You have to sense it in your within yourself, and and that it is magical. It is. Um, I don't know how many people here are using oracle cards already. I know I know some of you are because we we know you. Um, they are really wonderful, and if you you can use them for different purposes. Some people, you know, they're teddy bear tarots or whatever. <laughs> We're using them as a sacred spiritual process, and they are very very. Um, enlightening. Yeah, the right decks can make a big difference. And mm -hmm. we wanted to tell you more about our upcoming Akashic Records course starting soon, May 15th. It's part of our larger spiritual guidance certification program. It's at tinyurl.com slash abundant dash living. And it's one four month course that's part of a three part course. Uh, there's three courses in the whole program. You could just start with one course, which is this upcoming Akashic Records course. And, and then there's a second course on the Enlightened Masters, and that's four-month course as part of the whole program, and the Angels, Oracles, and, and EFT course. So they're all interrelated and connected. Uh, and... The, the beauty is, is that it gives you a way with a spiritual community to learn weekly, once a week. All classes are recorded for about an hour and a half and practice uh, with other people that you get to know and connect with, with your very valuable little spiritual community in this uh, 
course. And a few people have already enrolled and taken some of our previous trainings who are here, and they, they, they could tell us a little bit about what their experience has been like. Uh, um, Bonita, you, I know you've been. Hello. Uh, hi. <laughs> Um, well, I just finished the um, uh, Archangel uh, class, and it, um, it just gave so much, so many possibilities to get information to, to help you move forward. Um, I use it with my clients, and just for an example, um, one of my clients um, uh, lost her uh, partner five weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about um, her friends, you know, ra rallying around her to help. And so we did a reading on, um, you know, what does she need to focus on? What does she need to release? What does she need to embrace? Um, really great reading for a lot of things. And what, what I drew for the, what she needed to focus on was community. I mean, we had just talked about that community, right? There's always so many synchronicities. Like she had the tool that she needed to focus on, mm -hmm. but she didn't see it as a tool until we got the card, right? That's what you need to do. So um, I don't know. Just it's just it's just so great with knowing what what might be coming and what you should be focusing on, and like I said, what you need to release and what do you need to embrace and and um, just kind of a, gives you a pathway, a pathway to help you move forward and to have your best life and change. And whether you're using it for yourself or whether you're using it with clients, it doesn't matter. It's it's all perfect. I like the way you express that. Thanks, Bonita. It's great being with people like you. Thanks for the feedback. And uh, also, uh, Margaret, if, if you're available, uh, you've taken some of our training, including some of the spiritual guidance program. Um, someone was asking, where do you find the course? It's getting through dot org slash spiritual slash spiritual guide program. That's but there's a, a shortened uh, URL to get to the course. And that's tinyurl.com slash uh, abundant dash living tinyurl.com abundant dash living. And you can see it. Let me see it right there on the screen at the bottom, tinyurlon.com, abundant-living. But going back to uh, Margaret, if you're available, and sharing a little bit about yeah. your experience. Um, I have so many wonderful things to say. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think that what I would like to express, a couple of things that I, I love the way that... Um, the way that information in, in your courses is presented and it's always done with like no judgment. You know, you did mention that when you were talking about it, but you, you expose us to things in such an open way that allows us to take in what you're saying and then find out what works and then being able to expand on that. And I just absolutely love that. I have had so many, awakenings because i've also taken i finished their um year-long course for spiritual uh, i'm sorry for coaching healing and i learned so much about myself and so much about how to work through my own things which then i feel has made me a better person and able to work through so many other things for with other people as well i found myself in many ways um and I also, speaking to the way that you structure your courses, I love the, the demos that we do in each class gives everybody an opportunity to experience something really transcendent. And we always seem to have this great energy with the people that are involved. And um, I have made lifelong friends with, with you, Jane and Philip, and also <laughs> with people from the course. Um, and I just... I, I find the practice sessions, and I, I've mentioned this before, but I, I really feel so strongly about them. The practice sessions that we get to do in the groups have just been so powerful. It just really brings everything into to sort of like reality. You know, it's it isn't just you're not just taught something; you experience it, and I think that that's so powerful. 
um, yeah, I, I just can't say enough good things whenever I'm talking about the stuff that I've learned here and sharing that information with people. I just, it's been a very, very, very fulfilling experience for me. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Thanks for that feedback. That's great. It's, yeah, and it's great being with people like Margaret and Bonita and others on a regular basis. That's an external spiritual community while you're developing the internal spiritual family with the angels and the masters, too, which, right. is, which is exciting. And the upcoming course beginning May 15th, uh, it basically has this, you could say, this Venn diagram of the Akashic Records, the oracles, and the energy healing working synergistically together. And in the course, uh, which we subtitled The Opening to Your Magnificence, and this is one of the three courses. You can take one course or all three courses for certification. You're going I to, recommend all three. Yes, we do. <laughs> it's going to deepen your love and awareness. You're going to access the higher dimensions, as we, as we said, have more connections with guides, enlightened masters, angels. You're, and this is a big one, trusting yourself more. A lot of spiritual people don't know what to trust. And this is one of the best ways you can, you can do it, as we said, developing your intuition, which is going to accelerate your spiritual growth and boost your spiritual IQ. And you're going to get a lot more clarity about your soul's purpose and mission, uh, which is very powerful. And here's what you'll receive in the program. Uh, and um, Margaret was mentioning the weekly classes and practice labs where you practice with a partner on Zoom. And they're all recorded if you miss any. And so we, each course, as we said, is four months. And there's a week off each month. We have an exclusive little ebook, Awakening to Your Magnificence. It's sort of an overview reference book of where we are and how this course relates to the next new frontier in humanity. Another little ebook you get with the course is Gifts and Blessings from Oracles, Angels, and Enlightened Masters. So we go more into what the Oracles, Angels, and Enlightened Masters are just to get an overview, concise overview. And then, as Jane was mentioning, there's readings, which will start off very, very simple oracle readings and get a little more complex as you grow in the course. And you can do it at any rate you want, and it will be uh, fit to, to your rate of learning and use. And there's a lot of really wonderful, powerful handouts and downloads you'll get. And as we mentioned, we can't say enough about this small, wonderful spiritual community you'll be connected to. So you might wonder about like an Akashic Records course. And I I, I looked up there a few of there, there's one's out there. Here's one by uh, Emily Harrison. She spoke at Harvard. She was featured in Spiritual Business Magazine. And this is a four-month course, like the Akashic Records course. And it's video lessons and weekly classes. And the cost of that is a one-time payment of $5,500 or four monthly payments of $1,500. Um, so it doesn't Ours is not that costly, and it, we think <laughs> ours is very effective, and it's one of three courses for the Spiritual Guide program, uh, which begins May 15th. And uh, the, there, there's a, currently a, uh, a special early bird registration, so there's even a, a special pricing at this moment for you. I'll show you here what that, that is. And it's uh, the spiritual guide program. You can take one course, or as we recommend, take all courses. So just start off with one, and it's a ninety-five dollar payment for four months, or for the whole course, it's eighty-nine dollars. This is the special early bird for the three courses for twelve payments, or a single payment for nine ninety-five. So we think it's a very good value, very reasonable, and you'll get a lot of support and depth to it. And people really like the results they get. Um, so, Jane, anything you wanted to mention uh, further about the program or anything else we wanted to share before um, we close? Just that we we do this for a reason. We do this for more than <laughs> just to, it's not an occupation for us. It really is a purpose for us. And um we so appreciate all the people who participate because in the end, also, as we, as we vibrate in a lighter way, we are com 
contributing that light to, to the to the overall uh, vibration on the planet, which, mm -hmm. as I mentioned when we were doing the uh, meditation, that it it isn't that great right now. <laughs> <laughs> so we certainly we appreciate everybody who wants to raise their vibration to live in a more uh, elevated, uh, enlightened way and and really enjoy life to the fullest. Right. And uh, excuse me about that. Uh, there it is. Uh, the course is begins May 15th, the Akashic Records opening to your magnificence. The website is tinyurl.com slash abundant dash living. You feel free to connect with us. There's a there's a link to connect with us and set up an appointment if you'd like to talk more specifically, or we'd love to answer your questions or uh, help you in any way we can. So it has been great being with you all, and this is a wonderful, exciting transformational journey as we awaken individually and collectively. Great being with everyone.